Well, hello, electric vehicle fans. Uh, my name is Robert Fournette. Uh, I am a Martinsburg, West Virginia resident. I've been in this area for a couple of years, but spent uh, most of my life working and living in the Charleston, West Virginia area. Uh, so I want to show you a little bit about my electric vehicle and solar setup. And at the very end, uh, I'll, for those who want to stick around, I'll actually go into a little more uh, behind the scenes information about uh, the data that I've collected from the various uh, systems and devices that I have, and also a little quick tour of the inside of my electric vehicle. Um, a little bit more about me, I am the president of the uh, West Virginia Electric Auto Association. Uh, so uh, just took that role on in January and uh, very happy to work with the group uh, that I've been a member of for several years. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. All right, so to uh, jump in here, let me share my screen. Okay, uh, so that uh, the white box you see on the screen there, that is the uh, Solar Edge 11,400 watt inverter that converts all the DC power from my panels on the roof to AC power uh, for use by the home and uh, to push back out to the grid. Uh, so it's a decent size inverter, and that uh, little round thing you see sitting on top is a uh, Wi-Fi uh, unit uh, that provides connectivity for all these devices. All right, that's my electric vehicle charger. It's a uh, juice box, 40 amp uh, unit. provides about 10,000 watts of uh, power for the car to charge, which is pretty decent. Uh, uh, the car can go up to 48 amps, uh, but the, the unit provides decent power. It's got a 25-foot cable on it, which is nice. I also have battery electric mowers and uh, lawn equipment. Uh, the sun can grow the grass and the sun can provide the power to uh, maintain the grass. So uh, that's a little bit about those. There's the electric vehicle. I'm gonna pause here for a second. So this is a Tesla Model 3. Um, this vehicle starts around, uh, you can actually get an off menu, quote off menu, $35,000 version of this car, roughly. Um, but the, the predominant version starts around $39,000. Uh, this car is a long range all wheel drive, so it has a few extra options and you know costs a little bit more than that. Uh, but there are lots of options available uh, to take a look at. As far as the range, it's rated for 310 miles. Um, I've had it on some pretty long trips. I frequently travel back and forth between Martinsburg and Charleston, West Virginia. That's about a 300 mile trip. Um, I've done that uh, in the same day down and back up without any difficulties. Uh, I've also been on some longer trips. Recently did a, an 1100 mile trip, round trip to uh, just south of Cincinnati and Florence, Kentucky, uh, which took a couple days. Uh, we went over, visited some family and uh, did some driving around and then came back. So uh, that is one of the great things about the uh, Tesla vehicles is the supercharger network, which allows you to charge quickly and, uh, and the vehicles have longer range. So that is one of the advantages. Um, we'll cover some more about the car uh, in that later section. Um, I mean, I won't say too much more about it other than uh, this is a dual motor, so it does have all wheel drive for driving in adverse conditions which if you drive Interstate 68 uh, between Martinsburg and Morgantown, you can appreciate how quickly those conditions can change. Um, it does have uh, storage under the hood there in the, what they call the frunk, the front trunk, and there's a large trunk in the rear. Okay, let's move on. All right, so I'm going to take a look outside and we'll take a look at the solar system. All right, so there's about 36 panels on the roof. They are 315 watt Panasonics. Most of those panels face um, pretty much south, uh, that section you're looking at right there. Uh, but I do have um, a few panels, I think there's five, on a westernly uh, facing section of the roof. And there they are. Uh, so those do pick up some of the late afternoon sun, which is really nice. So it's an 11,340 watt uh, total DC system on the, on the roof. 
On the side here, we've got a couple different things. We've got the emergency shutoff that you see there. That is for emergency services personnel who may need to get on the roof, firefighters, et cetera. And if they need to de-energize that system uh, to prevent any type of injury, then they can shut it all down from right there uh, without any uh, worries. So that's a, that's a mandatory feature of all installations. Uh, this, uh, this is a meter, it's a new meter uh, that I received with the new solar system uh, from the power company. It's a bi-directional digital meter that measures power flows both directions. The larger number, the 24,000 some number, that's uh, the amount of uh, kilowatt hours that I've pushed out to the grid. And the lower number is what I've used from the grid. So I do run a little bit of a head. Uh, I, I have a credit with the power company, so I always pay the minimal bill. Um, and if you have, uh, if you're in West Virginia, of course, there is the net metering policy, which allows you to get a credit for those kilowatt hours that you can bank and use at any time. So in the winter, when you're uh, using a little more power than you're making, you can use those banked credits to keep your bill at the minimum level. And I'll pause again here. Yeah, I do have a custom plate on the Tesla. I do like to uh, show off that it is sun powered. Uh, so that is one of my uh, uh, little quirks I like with the car. Okay. So now let's, uh, I do want to talk about, remind you of a few things. Uh, so I did mention the West Virginia Electric Auto Association. Uh, there's our website address, wveaa.org. Uh, so if you do have an electric vehicle or you're thinking about an electric vehicle, please do uh, take a look at the website, ask questions, join our email list by using the Contact Us page. I also want to mention National Drive Electric Week, which is coming up at the end of September. Um, there's the uh, website address. You can look for an event near you to meet up with uh, current electric vehicle owners, maybe get a ride in a car, ask questions. Uh, it's a great time to learn about a lot of different types of electric vehicles, different brands, different models, and ask questions of those owners. Uh, also, I want to mention the National Solar Tour, October 3rd and 4th. Uh, there's the website address. Similar idea, you can uh, visit a uh, solar home. Uh, like I usually participate in this event and I like to uh, open my home up to the public and show them the solar system and let them ask questions. And so, you know, you can ask questions of another homeowner. You're not getting a sales pitch from a company. You're just talking to somebody else who happens to have solar and ans answering uh, questions. All right, so that's uh, the meat of this portion of the presentation. If you want to hang around, I am going to uh, give you a little more information on behind the scenes data that I gather. And then after that, uh, I'll have a uh, short clip of some features of the interior of the Model 3. Okay, so if you're still hanging around, I presume you want to learn a little bit more about usage and data. Okay, so what you're seeing on the screen here is a chart of my personal experience. Uh, this is data that I've collected about my system and my usage. So this runs for about a year from April 18 to March 19. You can see that I generated 13,000 kilowatt hours in solar. Those are all the yellow bars over here. And you can see that this runs seasonally in the summer. July is usually the peak month. And uh, you're generating maximum power in the summer. And in the winter, you're generating minimal power. But you're still generating some and offsetting usage. And as I mentioned earlier, you're using that net metered credit from the summer in the winter to offset these lower months. You can see the blue bars is what the house has used, the green bars are what the EVs have used. Uh, at the time, I had two electric vehicles. I've kind of scaled back a little bit, so I've just got the one. Uh, so this usage has changed a little bit. My annual electric cost is $60, uh, so it's $5 a month is the minimum charge to have an electric meter. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of what my personal use looks like. And where does all this data come from, you might ask? That's a great question, so let's look at that. 
Okay, so the solar system itself, the inverter, has um, a web portal where you can look at all the data that's uh, being generated by that system. Uh, so I can look at individual days in a month, for example. Here's a day earlier this month where I produced 80.6 kilowatt hours, which is about, that's a little bit more than what it would take to fully recharge the Tesla from zero if it were at zero, which is never a good idea in an electric vehicle. Don't ever run it to zero. You always want to have some charge. And uh, you can see historical data. You can see last July I made uh, 1,800 kilowatt hours that month, which is always uh, generally the best month for this uh, area. You also see some of the environmental benefits. They like to show you how many CO2, uh, how much CO2, uh, pounds of CO2 were saved by this system and then they converted into equivalent trees, which is a nice little touch. All right, so that's solar data. As far as usage data, I can get that from a device I have in my main electrical panel called Sense, and it monitors actual usage uh, for the whole home, and uh, it also tries to recognize and break it out by device. So you can see here's uh, my refrigerator and this week and how much electricity it's using. Uh, it's pretty consistent. Uh, of course, today it's not, uh, the bar is smaller because we're not all the way through the day yet. And it gives you estimates on how much of your monthly use is consumed by this device and how much power it'll cost in a year. Of course, I don't, I make enough power to offset all this with solar, so that's not really a, a concern. You also have this nice uh, real time meter view. Um, there's yesterday. It was a great solar day. I was, uh, you can see this flat portion of solar at the top in the yellow. I was maxing out the amount of power that the inverter could convert to AC, so it kind of uh, just flat lines there. Those Panasonic panels have a positive uh, tolerance, so they will always generate um, the minimum power at test conditions. I mean, they will always generate the rated power at standard test conditions, but they can generate more. And so some days when it's just perfect conditions, a really cool, windy, sunny day, uh, those panels will produce more than what they're rated at. And you can see my usage in the red bouncing around. This is through the night. Uh, it's probably the uh, heating system kicking in a little bit last night. And you can see the beginning of today. It's solar's ramping up and my usage is still there. It's probably a hot water heater and some other things kicking on there. Coffee pot in the, this morning. So that's a little bit about Sense. I pull data from this device uh, on my usage, um, and that's where all that usage data came from. Now, as far as electric vehicle usage, uh, the unit that does the electric vehicle charging also collects data on uh, your charges, uh, when you charged, how long you charged, how many kilowatt hours were delivered to the vehicle. And this would include um, any type of waste. Uh, there's always a little charging overhead, uh, so charging is generally about 90% efficient, but it's not you know, 100%. There's always some losses, uh, but this number would include all that. Okay, so that's uh, a little bit more about uh, the data and the devices that collect that data and provide it. And again, just a real quick reminder for the different web addresses if you didn't get those earlier. And now, uh, for those who wanna hang around a little bit longer, I'm gonna do a real quick walkthrough of some of the features uh, that I enjoy in the uh, Tesla Model 3. So hang tight. All right, for those who've never seen the inside of a Tesla Model 3, this is uh, a quick look. It's very minimalist design. And we'll take a look at this center screen, which has a lot of information on it. It's where you make all the settings, uh, changes for the car. You notice there's really no, uh, well, not, there's very few dials and, and controls. We've got some, the steering stalks here. We could do a few things with those, but most of the controls are on this screen. So we've got all the car settings here that we can change. A lot of features are automatic, so you don't need to do much like headlights and wipers. You don't need to mess with those. Uh, we've got some efficiency information down here since the last charge. Uh, let's see. We've also got more energy information available to us if we want to get into all the details. 
Uh, so you can see the average over the last 30 miles was 229 watt hours, which is pretty good. All right, there's a few other things uh, we've got available here. You know, there's calendar functions that are tied to your phone. Uh, the backup camera, charging information, you know, what the current state of charge is. You can set the maximum charge limit. Uh, the last time I charged, uh, supercharged, and what it cost is here. You can set the maximum current that's allowed. It goes up to 48 amps. Uh, we've got a web browser. There's the uh, West Virginia Electric Auto Association uh, website. So, you know, you can kind of pull up different things on the web. Uh, we've got some entertainment functions. We've got games that we can play, if you've probably seen that online in different videos. Uh, so there's a variety of games. And you can only play or do any of this stuff while the vehicle's in park. So if you're sitting somewhere charging, you know, these are some you know nice little time killers that you've got. We've got the theater where we can play Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, that kind of stuff. So let me see if I can load Netflix here. Sometimes it takes a minute to open, depending on the connection it's on. There we go. So you got your Netflix interface, and you know you can play different shows and all that, just like you would on your phone or TV. Get out of that. All right. So that's most of those features. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Uh, and then you've got all your other controls here: uh, seat heaters. Uh, ventilation controls and you've got some nice little visualizations that you can combine and split airflow and adjust it. It's kind of neat. Okay. Um, audio controls. It's got streaming music uh, um, that's provided. Uh, you, you can do other streaming services like Spotify. Uh, some different things that you can do. I generally just listen to the streaming stuff. One of my favorite features, though, is the uh, camera system for Sentry. So it has a security system that will use the cameras around the car to record anytime someone gets close to the car. So you've got that feature. Um, and then it also has just a dash camera. So if you're driving, just during normal driving, it's always recording. If you're in an accident or something happens, you've got that video available. So I can uh, pull up a viewer here. Oh, this was the uh, a Walmart run the other day. Let me just scoot up because this is uh, it's not very exciting seeing the parking spot. There we go. I was pulling out. So you can see the different camera angles uh, available. You've got the front, you've got the rear, and you've got uh, the left and right camera angles. Let me jump ahead a little bit more. So you can always uh, record a video clip. It's always recording by itself and if you want to save the last 10 minutes or so uh, you can press a button or if you honk the horn like you're a, a, an accident or an issue you honk the horn it records that video. So anyway that's uh, kind of a quick look at that. And uh, I said, again, this is one of my favorite features. Uh, one other little clip I'll show you is um, the charging. You can on this map, we've got this nice uh, map that we can see going on. We can also pull up uh, charging stations and we can see how many there are, um, you know, close to us. And if you notice the little boxes above the stations, like here's the one in Hagerstown. It tells you there are, looks like six stations and two are currently in use. So uh, if you're trying to plan on a stop and you see a supercharger is really busy, you might you know skip that one, go to the next one kind of thing. Um, but you do have nice visualization and data on supercharging. I got my map rotated. But anyway, that's so you can see all the superchargers in the area. 
And so yeah, you do have a lot of uh, data about uh, superchargers that are available. Uh, and the car is always connected to uh, to uh, the internet, either through an LTE connection or Wi-Fi. So it's always downloading updates and improvements. Uh, I've gotten several uh, additions to the car that didn't exist when I purchased it, like the dash camera, security camera function that didn't exist. And then uh, a few weeks after I bought the car, that arrived as a uh, over the air update. So it just uh, magically showed up one night when the car was connected to the internet. And the next day you've got new functionality. Well, that uh, pretty much concludes uh, the presentation. If you uh, stuck with it through the whole thing, congratulations. Uh, it's not like a movie where there's some extra footage or uh, funny blooper scenes at the end. Uh, but uh, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, definitely keep those other uh, upcoming events like the National Solar Tour and National Drive Electric Week in mind. And uh, enjoy Earth Day and hope to see you next year.